Health disparity is a huge issue in this country. We often talk about it here on this show. And new, new U.S. Census data from 2013 shows how stark the issue is among whites in America. Uh, the average wealth in the United States is about $130,000. Of course, uh, Hispanics at around $12,000. Uh, and blacks uh, just under uh, $10,000. Asian Americans come in second to whites in this country. This speaks to largely the issue of home ownership. Of course, as we talked about over the last uh, eight years, 53% of all black wealth was wiped out due to the home foreclosure crisis. Also, uh, African Americans are more or less likely uh, to invest in stocks and bonds as well. Now, again, looking at the numbers for uh, the total number for uh, whites in America, not Hispanic, $132,483 uh, for uh, Asian Americans is $112,250 for Hispanics, $12,460 for African Americans, $9,211. Now broken down by the net worth minus the equity in their homes, African Americans fare the worst. Uh, according to the Census Bureau, whites averaging just under $51,000, Hispanics at almost $6,000, and African Americans uh, at under $3,000. Now. Uh, the reason this is important because when you begin to talk about also uh, the expanding of businesses, as we uh, have reported on this show for the last four years, uh, when $23.09 billion was handed out in small business loans in 2013, African Americans received just $385 million of that, uh, less than 2%, largely because of the loss of homes very simple. No home, no loan, no business. Let's talk about this, of course, with our panel there in Washington, D.C. Don Calloway, he's the CEO of Pine Street Strategies. Long Victoria Burke is political analyst and writer for NBC Black. Eugene Craig, CEO of the Eugene Craig Organization. Uh, and uh, so, folks, uh, what, what really jumps out when you look at this Census Bureau uh, data, uh, Pew Research also uh, follows up with this as well. You really have a, a better understanding in terms of how far African Americans are behind everyone else when it comes to economics in this country. Absolutely, Roland. Um, you know, as you pointed out earlier, uh, th with the housing crisis and the loss of homes, uh, you know, people, they lost their number one asset. You know, in America, everyone's number one asset is their home and the equity within that home. And once you lose that equity, you lose that home, um, lose your number one asset, you lose that net worth. And that's what's happened to black America over the last uh, couple of years, last decade or so. Exactly. And it hasn't been a help at all that uh, our politicians really have no policy, frankly, for poverty. Uh, President Obama rarely talked about poverty, didn't care about the issue, never spoke on it. Uh, currently, obviously, Donald Trump doesn't talk about poverty. We have one in every seven Americans in poverty, f over 40 million people. Uh, it wasn't helpful that President Obama paid no attention to the Bush tax cut rates and uh, effectively turned down four trillion over ten years in revenue with the fiscal cliff deal and with the extension of the bush tax cuts in late twenty ten but even with without that he has no no policy for poverty but n neither do the republicans our three poorest states uh... arkansas west virginia and mississippi are run by the republican party and they have no policy for poverty and, and roland a big part of the problem here is that it's not a sexy thing uh... electorally to talk about the poor and talk about the idea of poverty. We're very much caught up on both sides of the political spectrum in talking about the middle class and advancing the middle class. Of course, nobody is really talking about the wealthy, although our policies tend to... Yeah, but, to but, 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 but Don, mm -hmm. but Don, here's the issue, though. Even Look, I, I understand in terms of uh, talking about uh, those who are in poverty when you talk about the wealth gap, uh, but even when it came to the home foreclosure crisis, the right. middle class, the black middle class, was the one that hit the hardest uh, because uh, even the, because you, there really is no comparison between black middle class and white middle class uh, because it, it, it's a right. whole different distinction because of the amount of money being made. Uh, and so the issue I think you also have here is that that you have a rollback. Of, of various affirmative action programs and also programs that they, they, they were all about equalizing, uh, you know, when it came to access to capital, access to contracts. Uh, and so when you roll those back, you also make it even more difficult to be able to grow and expand businesses. There's no doubt about that. And a lot of that, uh, what we consider to be, excuse me, folks on the right electorally score points by saying that these are uh, currently new discriminatory policies. It's not. It's a recognition that there are real and tangible effects from historical uh, injustice such as bank loaning and, and, and indiscriminate, excuse me, discriminatory bank loan lending practices and redlining that still exist today. And the 2008 housing crisis has made it worse. Even right here in Maryland where you have the, the richest
largest per se African American population in the country, their housing stock has not come anywhere close to recovering at the rate of the normal rate that we've seen in the recovery across this country. So there are substantial uh, uh, elements to talk about here, not only in the universe of those in poverty, but actually those in the African American middle class who have fallen over the last 10 years because of the housing crisis. Well, but also I think, uh, Eugene, one of the issues is, is, uh, when, you look, when you look at uh, economic policies on a local level, the reality is if you look to Washington, D.C., you're going to, uh, you're going to fail. Uh, if you look at what Maynard Jackson did in Atlanta, Marion Barry in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., Coleman Young in Detroit, uh, you had a slew of black mayors in the early 70s who understood uh, how politics and economics uh, combines. Look, the reality is you have not seen that uh, in Memphis uh, since the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The same thing can be said about other cities as well. And so I think we also have to look at uh, what are those very specific policies on the local level, on the state level, and how they also do not, uh, frankly, uh, decrease this wealth gap. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, Washington can't solve the issues in Main Street America. That's been something that's been proven time and time again. You know, Barack Obama, would, you know, he couldn't solve the issue, and Donald Trump's not going to be able to solve the issue. The issue of poverty is a localized issue and has to be dealt with on a local level. The federal government can do things like block grant, provide block grants and other types of funding, but at the end of the day, the solution is going to have to come from that local community, well, from that local government. I, I'm going I'm to respectfully disagree a little bit here, Eugene, because when you have the one per se anti-poverty agency we have, which is the Housing and Urban Development Agency, run by a guy who says that poverty is a myth or it's a state of mind, that's a per se problem. That one mission is to eradicate poverty or help to eradicate poverty through the proliferation of affordable housing. And for someone to say that poverty is a fiction, running that department also, by the way, with <laughs> a brain surgeon, a pediatric neurosurgeon with no uh, relevant experience whatsoever in poverty issues uh, or or affordable housing issues this is the one agency that's well, that could well, possibly do something on the federal well, level I'm gonna push back on that. I think the number one aspect that Ben Carson brought to that agency is the fact that he spent his time uh, he spent his time energy and resources over the years actually dealing with poverty on the local level I, I, I local don't know come on man that's, 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 that's the first thing that's the first thing that's exactly secondly 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 Carson Collars secondly okay one second okay hold on okay hold on all all guys all three Second. All three cannot talk at one time. <laughs> uh, Eugene, second, finish your comment. Uh, secondly, before, before secondly, my next when story. Comes, secondly, when it comes to dealing with poverty and economic growth in this country, there's nothing, there's no greater economic driver than, than, than growth and jobs. Than growth and jobs, and the Republicans are right on the policy when it comes to developing growth, developing business, developing jobs for this country. Yeah, like, what is your example? Well, I, uh, Where's your example? Look at Maryland. Well, again, again, no, you, you, you can say, you can say. Give an example. Look at what's going on in Baltimore. Eugene, Eugene. Look at what's going on in Virginia with Fortune 500 companies. One second, one second. Eugene, Eugene, you can make the point. Eugene, Eugene, first of all, let me be clear. The three of y'all, when I'm talking, I need everybody to stop. Okay, that's first. You can talk about the whole deal in terms of driving economic and jobs, but if you don't have economic policies that impact the folks at the bottom, what you just said is utterly irrelevant. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. <laughs> we will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.